welcome to another episode of Husky Trails. This video is part of a series where I go over the different types of mushing I do with Leica and the different equipment we use and how to set it up. So bike drawing essentially is biking with your dog. However, the big difference to just going out and biking with your dog is that it is still set up as a mushing activity, which means you still have the dog in a harness attached to the front. The dog is going to run and pull in front of you. So for bike touring, there's not a whole lot you actually need. You need a bike, you need an attachment to keep the line that the dog pulls you with away from your tire. You need a specific mushing line which means it has some form of a shock absorber in it. Your dog needs a pulling harness and then what other equipment you want to take with you. So first of all, let's talk about the bike. Um, a lot of people ask me, I want to do this with my dog, what type of bike is the best? So there isn't really one type of bike that is the best for this. If you want to be competitive with this and actually go into bike during races, you probably want to use a mountain bike because it's the sturdiest. However, I always recommend take the bike that you are most comfortable with. You don't have to buy a super expensive, fancy, all specced out bike. Use the one that you are the most comfortable and secure on. However, there are a few things about the bike that you need to keep in mind when you want to get into bike touring. First of all, I highly, highly recommend that your bike has disc brakes that will give you the best grip. The goal is still you want to be able to securely stop the dog whenever you need to. When I started out with this, I actually used an old bike I just had. It was a really old cheap bike and it had rim brakes. And to be honest, it did the trick for a little bit, but after a couple of months, the brake pads were just completely shot. So I definitely recommend when you want to do this, have a bike with disc brakes. Whether they're mechanical disc brakes or hydraulic disc brakes, doesn't really matter, um, but disc brakes for sure. The other thing you definitely want to have on your bike is you want to make sure your bike has some sort of a um, tire that has some sort of a decent tread on it. So you don't want to use a, a road bike or purely city bike tire, um, mainly because you don't want to do this on paved ways. Um, you can do that when you start out or sometimes you have to go a little bit paved when you have to cross paths or something like that. But prolonged mushing on paved or very, very hard surfaces is not good for your dog's joints and for your, for your dog's feet and pads. So you do want to do this, when you, if you do this regularly, you do want to do this on trails. And for trails, you want to have a tire that can deal with some rocks, some, some roots, some dirt, some mud. Um, so that's the other reason why a lot of people use mountain bikes for this. Um, as you can see, this is not a mountain bike, but you should um, have a tire with a good trail tread on it. So. What type of bike you use is really, again, is really up to you. Bikes that I think are most suited for this are either mountain bikes or what I have is called a gravel bike or touring bike or, or something from that category, simply because it is the best bike um, for, to handle a trail and to handle like different um, rougher conditions. Um, I have a gravel bike and I also have a mountain bike hybrid for this. So the other thing you need is some form of a, an attachment that attaches the lead that goes to your dog, to your bike. So there are different types and names um, of attachments. This is called a bike drawing arm or a bike drawing bayonet. They're also called bike drawing noodle or bike drawing antenna. Um, it really doesn't matter. They all serve the same purpose. They're really the only function for this is to keep the line away from your wheel. So keep in mind though, that if your dog stops in front of you, you will still eventually go over that line. So you wanna make sure it's usually, you wanna make sure it's tight. 
um, but you always still have to keep an eye on it. You can't still go over that line, but it keeps it out of your immediate wheel area. Um, you can find these online, really. You can find these online at all sorts of dog mushing outfitters. Or if you're crafty, you can really just make your own. You can get a piece of um, PVC pipe um, and drill a hole through it and just get a, a, a tough line and attach it yourself. However, the one thing to consider is that you always, always, let me say this again, always attach the bike drawing piece to the frame of your bike. Never attach it to your handlebar. This is so, so important. If your dog zigzags in front of you or your dog does decide to go off to the side after a squirrel or a deer or whatever, it will turn your handlebar around and you'll just fall. So this way, if she dashes to the side, I'm still in control. I can steer the other way and pull her the other way. So bike drawing antennas and some of the other bike drawing pieces are set up basically twofold. They will still attach to the frame and then they have another piece that attaches to the handlebar, but that is not the piece that takes the pull. That is only the piece that basically dangles the bike during section over your tire. But the piece where the pull is on always has to be attached to your frame. And I forgot to mention, and it goes without saying at this point, that's why we have a specific bike during attachment. Never, never hold the lead in your hand and have your dog pull. Never do that. The next piece you need is your drawing line. Um, if you've seen my other videos, this line can be used for all mushing activities. You can use this for traditional sledding. You can use this for ski drawing. You can use this for canicross. cross. Um, you can use this for hiking. Um, but the important part is that it is a specific mushing lead. So it is a, um, a very strong um, PE rope. It does have a built-in bungee portion and again this is really really important that for one if the dog pulls that it doesn't immediately pull you forward on your bike but also that the dogs don't hurt your bikes. So this line with the built-in bungee piece you can use that for one or two dogs. If you do mushing with a larger team so three plus you will actually need to get a different bungee or shock absorption piece that separately attaches to your line. Uh, however, for bike drawing, I do not recommend you do this with more than two dogs. Um, so again, this is the same line I use for other mushing activities. This is an eight foot piece. This is the main line or the gang line. Uh, it usually comes with another piece. If you've seen my other videos, you'll see it. It is another four foot line that attaches to the front of this. Um, and usually you do use that. Um, so that makes the total line 12 feet. However, for bike drawing, I do not use that. For bike drawing, I only use this eight foot piece simply because when we're on mountain bike trails, we do have tighter turns um, and I need to be able to, to get around with her and the bike on tighter turns. So you should really not be doing this with anything shorter than six feet. Because you do have to keep in mind that if the dog stops or slows down in front of you, you don't want to run the risk running into your dog. Um, that is really, really, really important. If you hit your dog with the bike, your dog might be done with this. Um, you want to make sure the dog doesn't have any negative associations with this. So I definitely recommend do not do this with anything shorter um, than six to eight feet. question I get a lot is that people ask me what dog breed is best for this. So the good answer is there is no dog breed that is best for this or that you can or cannot really do this with. But there are a few things you have to keep in mind when you want to get into this with your dog. So since your dog will be pulling, your dog should be at least 30-35 pounds for this. So she's right at 42 pounds, but 30 is probably the bottom line where you want to go. Another few things you have to keep in mind are that your dog should be fully grown, so your dog should be about a year old. That is something you will have to discuss with your vet. Another thing to consider is that obviously your dog shouldn't have any hip 
or joint or feet issues or issues with breathing um, so there are some breeds just like because of their breed characteristics that are just not good to do this with and then there are other breeds that you can probably do this with a little bit better um, in general before you start out with this though you should clear this with your vet so again make sure your dog is at least one year old your dog is at least 30 pounds your dog is as far as you know healthy and then go to your vet tell your vet what you want to do and see if your vet has any points that you should consider why or why you shouldn't do this oh and the last thing is obviously your dog should have a natural willingness to run and pull um, you can train your dog to do this but honestly huskies are I mean they were bred for this but I never really had to train her to go ahead and run and pull and stay on the trail it's just like she just does this naturally but a good indication is usually if your dog has a lot of energy your dog loves to run and your dog is a leash puller this might work for you the other really important thing is the harness so you need to use a pulling harness for this you cannot just go to your pet store around the corner and use a pretty walking harness or something like that. There are also harnesses that people, specifically with huskies, like to use. Um, they're called no-pull harnesses, so they go slightly over their shoulder and they actually restrict their movement. Obviously, you cannot use any harness like that. So the way sled dog harnesses or pulling harnesses are designed is that over the shoulders and over the backs and along their bodies they give them free range of motion and along the shoulder blades and where the harness where the dog will have pull on the harness they are actually very very thickly padded there are many many dog mushing outfitters uh, online or maybe in your area that you can contact and they will be able to advise you on the right type of harness and the right size for your dog but again you, when you start out, you can use a regular harness that you have for your dog. But if you say, just to test it, but if you say, this is working for us, we want to do this regularly, do not use your regular harness. Go and buy a pulling harness. And then obviously it should also go without saying, never, never attach the pulling lead to your dog's collar. Your dog should never, never, never pull you from the collar. And then just a few other things of equipment um, that I always keep with me. So first of all, always, always wear a helmet. Um, I used to work with horses a lot and I've seen a few cases where a helmet actually saved a life. <laughs> so always, always wear a helmet and what other form of protection you feel you will need. Um, always have bottle of water with you for your dog the other thing I always have with me is um, I have a, a trail app on my phone and in case I don't have cell phone reception I also additionally have a GPS device that connects to the satellites that if I'm out I have no reception I always know where I am I always find my way back home um, I will make a separate video um, of all the equipment that I take with me on our different activities This is a bike joint arm or bayonet. It's made of a hard but flexible plastic and the part that attaches to the frame of the bike has additional foam padding. It then simply fastens with two heavy-duty velcro straps and a smaller nylon strap. The bungee line attaches to the front. I use a locking carabiner, but you can also directly loop the line through the hole. I use a carabiner because it's easier for me to just unclip Leica's line here and then I still have her on a leash essentially. If you use a carabiner, make sure it is made for dog mushing or other heavy duty activities, otherwise it might break. So you attach this along the top tube of your frame. Make sure that the padded side is on the inside against the frame. When you tighten the velcro straps around your top tube, you have to make sure that you don't tighten them over any cables you might have there. As you can see, this bike doesn't have any, 
but if your bike has cables running here, you have to make sure to go under them to not cut off your brake lines. Then you just make sure that they are snug so that the attachment doesn't move around. For the front strap, you have to look out for the same thing again. When you loop it around the head tube, make sure you go under all of your cables. Also make sure to loop it around the head tube and not the stem of your handlebar. You can see here how the strap goes around the frame under all of my cables. And then I give it one last check and move the handlebar from side to side to make sure my steering isn't obstructed. Then you attach your bungee line to the carabiner. Or if you don't use a carabiner, you directly loop it through the bike drawing arm or bayonet. And then, finally, the bungee line snaps to your dog's harness. And that's what your finished setup looks like. You're ready to go on bike-drawing adventures with your dog. Happy trails!